Surah Namal chapter 27 When Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam He was a powerful man He was once going with his armies and his horses And the ants, you go into Surah Namal chapter 27 Verse 18 The ant, there is an ant who spoke to the other ants And the ant told the other ants a -N -T -S, eh? He said, go back. She said, go back into your homes. Go back into the hole. Get down quickly. Suleiman is coming with his horses and his armies. And maybe unknowingly, Suleiman may crush you. Suleiman alayhi salatu wa salam. Get back. Subhanallah. Masa kinakum. Use the word masa. Where you stay. Go back where you stay. Whether it's the hole or whatever. And you know what? Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. Allah had blessed him with the knowledge that he understood the language of the birds, the animals, the ants, etc, etc, etc. He had the jinns working for him. He was a big man. He was a powerful prophet of Allah. Very powerful. He controlled men and jinns. Allah gave him the power to control the wind. Allahu Akbar. The wind. That's how powerful he was. And you know when the ant said to the other ants, Go back into your places before Solomon crush you. Solomon crush you or kill you unknowingly. Allah says in the Quran, hear what Allah says. Allahu Akbar. Fatabassama. Allah. Fatabassama dhahika. Min qawliha. Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam, he understood the language when he heard that he smiled. And Allah uses the word, the Arabic word for smiling is basama, basama, to smile. And Lord ha kaf, to laugh. Allah emphasized his smile so much that he did not only smile but he laughed. He was such a great prophet, such a powerful man. He smiled, he laughed. The Prophet smiled and laughed. And there is another occasion again in, uh, in, in the Quran when Hazrat Sarah, Sarah alayhi salatu was salam, very beautiful, very powerful, interesting. The wife of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. When she got the news, and just go cool because I, I really don't want to get in reading all these verses here. When she got the news in Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse 71, when Allah gave her the news that she was going to be the mother or she would have a child by the name of Ishaq, who would also have a child by the name of Yaqub, Allah says in the Quran, and she smiled. And Allah used the word smile. Dahika. Subhanallah. Dahika tum mustab shira. Allah says that she laughed and smiled in rejoicement. Allah used the word. So I'm not telling you about smile because it's just an idea. Then some of you might say it's only sunnah. It's not mentioned in the Quran. Well, Allah mentions it. That Sulaiman smiled. The wife of Ibrahim smiled. The prophets of Allah smiled when they used to receive the good news. They would smile. And there is another verse that I want to quote for you before we conclude so that you don't think this was just an idea. This is a Quranic order from Allah. Allah has created this for us in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Najm. I want to quote this verse for me, for you from Surah Najm. Hear what Allah says in chapter 53, verses 43 and 44, to do with smiling and laughing. وَأَنَّهُ هُوَ أَذْحَكَ وَأَبْكَ Allah says, it is He who has created for you that opportunity to smile, to laugh. Well, the sunnah of the Prophet is that he didn't laugh wild like you see these wild people laughing and getting on wild and crazy. Not that. But something with modesty. But hear what Allah is saying. Surah Najm, 
verse 43 and I want to quote it because sometimes we don't understand these things and sometimes we don't believe it and then he also says he says I've created for you the opportunity to laugh to cry I have given you life I've created for you life and I've created for you death then he continues to say and I've created males and females and pairs for you so he included laughter together with life and death Allahu Akbar so what about our Muslim pious man brother I mean with the long beard and the long kurta and who don't laugh they didn't see this verse Allah created smiling and a little modest laughing what happened to us we got so pious because we follow a Christian religion a lot of people unfortunately I know I have a lot of Christians who view this a lot of Hindus who view this on al live but I'm just saying what Islam is this is our perspective it's that padre concept in the Roman Catholic line where they don't believe in marriage nuns fathers all right so a lot of us follow a lot of these Indian cultures and these false pride things that was good for their people and their time and their religion and their culture I criticize nobody brothers that are making this very clear that's their perspective and interpretation of their religion we got our Quran we got our Sunnah the Prophet وسلم, to follow let's follow it that way don't bring this false pride and that's a problem I see happening to a lot of Muslims Forget about sheikhs and imams and scholars. Any regular person, soon as they start going to masjid and they're praying a little bit and read a little Quran, they stop smiling, they stop making jokes, they stop being happy, nice and joyous. Listen, this is something Allah has created for us. This is something Allah has designed for us. Our Prophet ﷺ was not a grumpy, grouchy, sulky person. He was a loving person. He always smiled. Those of you who came late, you know how to take that CD after, inshallah, where we quoted those hadith. I don't have the time to get into it. Where the Prophet ﷺ and Sahabas have mentioned that they have never seen anyone smiling more than the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, it's a sadqa, a blessing for you when you smile to your brother. Well, that means also sisters, you must smile to the sisters. Be careful how you smile to the brothers. I know brothers probably only want to smile to sisters, you know, smile to brothers. Because the intention is always corrupted somewhere. But <laughs> let's be, we want to conclude the khutbah, my brothers and sisters. Let's try to follow the Quran. Don't follow culture. Don't let this false religion thing that we see around going on. Don't follow that. Follow what Allah says and the Rasul did. And that everyone knows how loving and nice the Prophet was. He said to the people, you must be good to your family because he is best to his family. He was nice, loving, playful, smiling to his wives and children. That's the personality we need to have. And you don't need to only do that at home. We need to do it all the time. I don't mean you must go around as though you're on drugs only smiling and you don't know what you're smiling about. Smile with some intelligence. Be a little level-headed, inshallah. And follow the Quran and follow the Sunnah, inshallah. It'll make us a better person. There is a lot of research and scientific research on the benefits of smiling. But I don't have time for that, Allah, right now. I wanted to just speak on the Quran and Sunnah of smiling. Scientists have proven on so many different aspects of the benefits of smiling. How it helps you, it helps the heart, it relieves stress, it makes you feel younger. It's so many different things. It's a better thing for your personality, lifestyle. Let us don't let Islam come between us. When I mean, Auz Let me correct that statement. We false pride this Islam. Let us don't let culture come between the Quran and the Sunnah and think that it is Islam. It's not Islam. Islam is what Allah says in the Quran. Islam is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. That is Islam. And last before, last 